Hello and welcome to the latest episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Glenn Simon, Product Marketing Manager for vSphere. Uh, in this series, we bring vSphere ex experts to chat about vSphere as well as uh, related technologies and what's, what's what the latest that's going on in the vSphere world. Today's episode, we're talking about a new security enhancement in vSphere 8 Update 1, and that is support for Okta Identity Services. Our expert today is Joshua Solomon, Senior Product Line Manager. And uh, welcome, Joshua, to our break room chat today. Well, thank you very much. So first of all, um, uh, first, first thing I want to know is what is Okta? I know I, I, I know a few years ago we introduced support for ADFS, Active Directory Federation Services, uh, as an identity provider, but a lot of customers have been asking for Okta. So what is Okta, um, and what is what are we really introducing in vSphere eight uh, update one? Sure. So. Our Okta support is, as you said, something that customers have really been asking for of late. Okta is one of a new breed of cloud-based identity providers that alongside Azure AD, Ping Federate, and others of that sort, that allows you to federate your software with those products. And that allows those products to be more secure because identity federation is a more secure identity model. I see. Uh, now, what I had learned um, originally when we, we introduced support for ADFS is that it acts as a, a kind of a, a, a neutral kind of a third party, uh, if you will, uh, for storing your logins, your passwords, so that you don't have to store all that stuff within vSphere's database, which, of course, is key, especially if you're dealing with auditors. You don't want to have to, uh, you know, you certainly want to take vSphere out of that out of that critical, you know, audit auditing uh, loop, I guess. I mean, you know, so so does that is that kind of accurate? My understanding, or is how how is how is you know how does Okta fit into that, and and why is it important? So you're in the right direction. Identity federation, you know, it's the same kind of capability that we see as consumers on the World Wide Web. Whenever you see a login with Facebook, login with Google, login with Apple, that's identity federation at work. That's standards-based, OIDC, OAuth 2 standards. What's happening when you have that type of identity federation is the website has the identity provider handle all of the credential handling, processing, validation which makes the website that much more secure because it doesn't have to touch credentials at all. Fewer, no opportunities for introducing new vulnerabilities in accidentally exposing credentials somehow. And that's the model that we'd like to move to across our SDDC product suite. Let's put identity services in the hands of those tools and vendors that specialize in it. It's our core competency so that we can use our VMware development resources to build the best workload management tools we can. Mm -hmm. Well, what, okay, so that makes sense. And uh, certainly I've run into uh, that a lot in the in, on the webs. Uh, so yeah, log in, choosing to use Facebook or Google or, or various others. So that makes makes a ton of sense. So I don't have to um, so, and I never realized, but I guess that's a more secure way of doing it. I very often will just use my own login and password, but or on the on that website. But I guess what I'm realizing is I should be using Facebook or Google those credentials because presumably they're doing a better job protecting that. Well, than yeah, whatever random web website that I'm logging into. That's the idea. Is you don't necessarily want to have to trust a hundred different sites that they're all handing your credentials correctly. Instead, let's put responsibility for that into the hands of a centralized identity provider that is well trusted by all the stakeholders and the websites themselves get to cross that off their list as a potential security concern. And if you don't mind, let me yeah. uh, talk through how that maps to the SCDC product suite. What that would look like is, all right, let's say I'm sitting down in my browser for the first time in the day, I open my browser, I hit a bookmark for my vCenter dashboard. And instead of seeing a login screen where I would enter my corp corporate credentials into a vCenter provided screen, vCenter would browser redirect me out to Okta and an Okta provided screen would be where I'd enter my corporate credentials. Okta would validate them. 
Okta would apply any multi-factor authentication if that's something you want configured. And then, assuming it's all validated, issue an identity token and redirect me back to vCenter. vCenter recognizes the token and great, I'm now logged in. And importantly, in that scenario, vCenter never saw my credentials at all. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And uh, just, just to show you just how little I know about this. So <laughs> I've seen face, you know, I've seen on the web, you know, on the, on the internet, you know, Facebook, Google, uh, but I've never seen Okta come up. Presumably, what, Okta, just something that's more enterprise class or? Yes, absolutely right. So if you're in the consumer space, you're going to see the Facebook, Google, Apple kind of options. Mm -hmm. But in the enterprise space, what the use case is that enterprises are typically trying to solve is how to bring their enterprise corporate directory into these products in a way that is both secure, but also allows them to audit which users are logging in through this central identity service. And so this federated model with Okta, you'll see the same thing Azure AD and Ping are two other common identity providers for the enterprise that, by the way, I'll mention, we do have those on our radar screen for potential support in the future as we look to add support for additional identity providers. But even this new support we're introducing for Okta, that's a, there's a lot of demand in the enterprise space that we hear from our customers. So getting that support out there for vCenter and for the ability to add NSX to that federation is a huge new capability. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what, um, are there any other details or limitations for anybody who's really kind of interested in this capability? Yeah, so there's a couple of interesting things to know about this Okta support. So as I mentioned, it uses OIDC and OAuth2 standards, which are common standards for identity federation, publicly known and used. The Okta support, when you configure it in vCenter, right now in vCenter 8 update one, that supports obviously bringing that vCenter into the Identity Federation, but it also supports bringing NSX, starting with NSX 4.1, into that same federation, which means that for the first time, you can have a single sign-on experience between your vCenter and your NSX manager, because they're both part of that same Identity Federation that you join to, in this case, Okta being your identity provider. Down the road, we have plans for the future to bring in the rest of our SCDC product suite so that you can have one identity federation across everything. But even this support we're releasing in vSphere 8 update one brings a huge amount of value in federation from vCenter and NSX to Okta. Okay. Now you mentioned I, just in, in passing, but I want to re return to that. So you mentioned now, of course, we we've supported ADFS for a while. Now we've we're introducing Okta, but I, I guess there are some other commonly used enterprise class um, identity providers out there. And I'm just kind of curious, what? Yeah, is I you know, are we looking at those? Yeah, that that's a good question, and we do hear a couple of other identity providers from our customers as common request, when are you going to get support for that? In particular, Azure AD for Microsoft and Ping Federate are two that are on our radar screen for support in some upcoming release to be determined. Okay. Uh, okay, good. All right. Uh, and then I guess the last question is, okay, if I'm, you know, vSphere admin or, you know, infrastructure manager, yes, you know, either I'm very interested or you know, maybe the auditors or my security team is very interested in, in pursuing Okta and, and kind of moving to that form of authentication. What's the next thing I can do to, to kind of get this started? So all you have to do is deploy a new instance of vCenter 8 update one. And if you go to the administration section in users and groups, there's going to be an option to change providers. And for the first time, that list of providers to which you can change includes Okta. Oh, okay. Just that, that sounds, simple. Sounds pretty simple. All right. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Joshua. I guess uh, one, one last uh, 
uh, tip for anybody watching. If you're interested in reading more about all of the enhancements in vSphere 8 Update 1, I think we have a detailed announcement blog that goes into all of those details. And then if you're interested in even more detail, scroll to the bottom and there's a link to the technical blog, which gives even more detail about what's new in vSphere 8 Update 1, including our support for Okta. Thanks again, Joshua. And with that, we've come to the end of this episode. If you like this episode, please join us again next time. And I'm your host, Glenn Simon, signing off for now. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.